Hello and welcome to Easy Adapted PE Assessment. My name is Sarah Fuller. I have been an adapted physical education teacher for 12 years. Um, I've worked in schools where I push in. I've worked in schools where I have self-contained or non-integrated classes. So I've kind of seen it all. Uh, but today we're really going to focus on assessment. And I don't know about you, but it tends to be one of the hardest things for me to uh, implement in my program because it is something that you have to be diligent about and something that has to be done on a regular basis in order for it to be valid and reliable um, when it comes time to to use it so today for just for a little bit of an overview we're gonna work on the referral process what assessments I use and for what purpose barriers and facilitators and how I utilize the information that I gather so first and foremost we're gonna go to the assessment process and it's going to be an overview of the initial referral so mine might be a little bit different than yours it depends on what district you're in and really what your special ed department has in place um, so just keep that bear that in mind as i'm kind of doing this quick overview of what happens so typically when a team member ot pt speech special ed has some concerns about a student that team member speaks to the case manager so they kind of have a discussion hey the student um, seems like they're not doing so great in in physical education class is there a possibility that you know we can start collecting data and the case manager says sure as long as that's not formal um, go ahead if you have some concerns why not let's start looking to collect that data so typically we're going to do this for a minimum of six weeks um, it varies depending on districts and it also varies depending on the student there are some cases where the team just decides together they have a meeting they're like you know what the student needs adaptive pe for xyz reasons you know it may be a student that's coming from a different district that we know has some really um, high needs and we're concerned about safety um, and and then in, in those cases you know it can happen very quickly in other cases where the student is kind of on the cusp um, we're going to collect as much data as possible uh, in order to really prove our case once that information is gathered, then we are going to present that information to the case manager. So again, this is very informal data that we're taking at this time. We don't have parent consent yet. So it's some informal information that we're gathering. Once we have it, we present it to the case manager, who then pre presents it to the special ed director. Once the special ed director receives that information, they are going to send out parent consent. Once the parent consent is received, then a formal assessment can take place. Um, and then the special ed director will then uh, look at that information and talk to the teacher and the case manager. After the assessments, the AP teacher writes up uh, an, a report and presents it, the information to the special ed director, who then um, gets a CSE meeting together with the team and the parents or a formal decision is made. So here are some general assessments that we're going to be using for uh, for referrals. So these are for students that are kind of on the borderline. We're not sure whether or not they need that um, adapted PE program. Uh, but prior to doing that, I just want to talk about the Lieberman and Brian inclusion scale. So the Lieberman and Brian inclusion rating scale is something that I'll use for my program specifically. So I'm going to use that uh, because I'm in many different buildings and I want to make sure that everybody is receiving the best adapted PE program that they can. Uh, and so I'm going to use the scale to kind of see if there's any holes in the program, see where we can improve. I'm going to make a couple goals for myself and then uh, halfway through the year I'll check them out, see if I've improved. Um, if I've met that goal, I'll start new goals. If I haven't, I'll kind of assess and figure out why not. The next one is the observation and referral form. Now I'm going to go ahead and use this as my informal data collection. So this is something where, again, I'm looking at one of those kiddos that's kind of on the cusp. I kind of want to think about referring them for the adaptive PE program. So I'm going to use this form to gather data. The CTAP, the PPI, and the fitness gram are all assessments that I'm also going to use. And those are general assessments to kind of look at the student's participation, 
their affective ability, cognitive ability, and then again, their general fitness. And the fitness gram is something that we use in our buildings, so it's obviously something that I'm going to be using as well in this general uh, referral assessment. Disability-specific assessments are the ones I'm going to be using for student-specific disabilities. So for low motor skills but kiddos that are still ambulatory, I'm going to be using the APs2, the TGMD3, and the Brockport Physical Fitness Test, all depending on what grade and age level they are. For severe or profound kiddos, um, I'm going to be using the MATP, so those are students that are, have some severe CP or muscular dystrophy. For students with visual impairments, it's the CTAP or the LMAP. And then orthopedic, it's Project Mobility. And again, you can click on any of these links or copy and paste this into your browser, and you'll be able to find these assessments fairly easily. So the next thing I want to talk about is how I collect my data. And I use Google Forms. I love Google Forms. They're very easy to use, um, and they do all of the kind of math part uh, without me having to do it. So it kind of figures it all out for me and that's why I love them so much. So as you can see here, what I'm gonna do is go to my Google Drive. I'm gonna go to Forms. Once I click Forms, um, I already have some made here, so I'm gonna open one up. And this is Loki, he's one of my students, so I'm gonna make sure to put his name up there and that I'm recording about his specific goal. I'm going to put his goal right in this next section. What I really want to look at is what I need to be assessing. Um, so his boundaries, he needs to stay within the boundary lines of class for 75% of the time. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a section and I'm going to name it boundary participation. I'm going to add in here the number of minutes that need to be recorded. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, do another add question and I'm going to put the assistance needed. I'm going to type in minimal, moderate, or maximum. And you want to make sure that these are all multiple choice so that you are able to choose which one that you want. The next thing I'm going to do is add one more section of notes. So I'm going to put this in paragraph form. And this is important because this way you can add in everything that you're seeing during the assessment. You don't have to go back later and think what it is that I actually saw. You can just type it in real time. So your responses are going to gather there, but first you need to send the form to yourself. So you're going to click send. You're going to type in your very own email. So I'm going to go ahead and type in mine. Once you type that in, you're going to come down and you're going to send the uh, information right to yourself. Now I'm going to show you how it gets sent to my phone first. So usually this is how it'll pop up. I'll go to my Gmail. I'll click right on the uh, mail that comes in. I will click out fill out in Google Forms and then right on my cell phone it pops up and I can go ahead and click through everything that I'm seeing. So let's say Loki was able to stay within the boundary lines for 20 minutes and he needed moderate support and then at the end I'm going to go ahead and type in whatever it is that I'm seeing. Now the cool thing about this is that you can also type in Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. You can also hit the microphone button on your phone and just speak into it. So you're not even having to take the time to type everything in there. You can just go ahead and say whatever it is that you're seeing. So then I hit submit. Now here I can also show you how, I, how it pops up in my Gmail. So I go to my Gmail. And this is how it pops up. I go ahead and I click on it. And again, you can just fill it out in Google Forms. Super simple. Um, you click on it. And this, I believe, is going to take us through it again. So my apologies for the repetition. But you're going to go ahead and click right through, just as if you would do if you were on your phone. So super simple. And again, you type in your answers. I do not have a laptop that I use in the gymnasium. I just find it kind of cumbersome and difficult to do both because a lot of the times I'm using my hands, but with my phone, I can just have it right on my person and it's very easy to use. So once we have all of that information, that's going to show up right in your Google Forms page. So you go back to your Google Drive, to your form section, you click on the one that you want. So we've been working on Loki's and you can see the resp responses are right here. Before it was four, now it's five. If you click on summary, you're going to see that the boundary participation is there. We've got our five responses, and here's all of the information for you in collected in a nice little pie graph so you can see all of the data ready to go. This is especially helpful when you're going to present this information to, let's say, the case manager, manager or the special ed department. So here's the assistance as needed graph. 
super simple, and here's all of the notes that you've taken. So everything's in a nice, neat little package. The next thing you can do is go ahead and click on this Excel sheet button. And once you click on that, it automatically puts that information into Excel form, which can be very awesome. So you can see at the bottom, so all the timestamp is in there, the boundary participation, everything. At the bottom, I also have all of my other students. So when you're in Excel, you can click on a button that um, helps you put all of the other Excel forms and kind of links it into that same form so you can get all of the information when you need it. Now, here's how this you would use this information if you were in IEP Director Frontline. You find your student, you go to the progress notes. We're typically under motor skills. You find the um, goal that you're working on. That's me. You click on the pencil. And right down here is where you're going to do a chart. Now, these we have to do in our school district um, week, uh, bi-weekly. Excuse me. So I'm going to edit the chart, and I need to add in some more information. So I'm going to click Add. And now what I'm going to do is go back to that Excel file. I'm going to see that the next one that I need for Loki is on the 15th. And I see that he's at 10 minutes at 10% moderate assistance. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to go to the 15th. I'm going to add in 10% or 10, excuse me. And then I know that I also need to add in some, uh, a note or some information. So on the 15th, I come back, I copy and paste the uh, information that I had written down and it's all in there. I'm going to go ahead once I feel good about everything. I'm going to click save and that is finished and that is as simple as it is. So when you come back to these pie charts, a cool thing you can do is copy and paste that pie chart into your um, end of the year annual review report for that student. So I'm going to go to my drive and I'm going to find that report for that kiddo. Here it is. So see, I've already got some information in there. And I'm going to go ahead and just paste that graph right in. Here's my graph. Or I'm, excuse me, my pie chart. So here's my pie chart, and it's pasted right in here. And you might have to do some editing as far as the formatting goes, but it's nice, super simple, and you can still kind of see everything that you need to see as far as that student goes. And again, I find this very helpful when presenting the data to parents or to the team. The other thing that you can do is all of those notes that you had in there from before, you can copy and paste those right from this form. So copy them up, and you're going to paste them right into your annual review report. And this way, you can kind of see where they've gone from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, because your notes are probably going to vary, and hopefully they've improved. Okay, so the other really cool thing you can do with this information is when you are doing an observation and referral form. So typically with these, and I'll show you, um, with these we have a lot more information and a lot more things that we're gathering. So the pie charts aren't necessarily going to be awesome for us. And I'll show you why. So if you go to the responses, we have all of our responses here. Here's what this is for the physical fitness section of our referral form. There's one, two, three, four, five pie charts just for that one section. And the sections go on and on and on and on because we're really looking at all of the different pieces of that student, not just one piece. So I find that to be really cumbersome when I'm handing that data into um, the special ed department or the case manager, it's a lot for them to look at. So I like to make it a little bit neater and a little bit more compact. And the way I'm gonna do that is go to the Excel file here. And now in this Excel file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right over here, and here you can see this is our one of our first sections for physical fitness. So what we have to do is name all of these different columns. So you're going to highlight the column, data, and named ranges, and you're going to name each one of these. As you can see here on the side, I've already done that. So for example, this is the first one in GG, as you can see here, G. I put, since this says performs activities that require upper body strength, I've labeled it upper body. So you're going to go through and label each one of these. Again, once you do it once, you don't have to do it again. That's the beauty of this. So I went through and I named each one of these. After you're done doing that, you're going to create a new tab, and I've already labeled it physical fitness. That's the fun part we're going to see in a second. So I'm going to copy and paste all of the physical fitness pieces. So these were there are five sections that I showed you before. So remember, we've got these five sections. 
performs activities with upper body, lower body, flexibility, endurance, and body comp. So again, upper body, lower body, flexibility, endurance, body comp, they're the same things. Now the way that I am rating these are by adequate, needs improvement, improvement, significantly inadequate or not observed. Now that's exactly the same as it is on our sheet. You wanna keep it exactly, exactly the same. So as you can see here, those are the choices. So here's a little bit of the tricky part, but it's not too bad once you start going. You're gonna put in this um, uh, formula. So equals count if, and then you're gonna do a parentheses and you're gonna put in upper body. Remember, upper body is the name as the name range of this column. So you're gonna put upper body B2, and you're putting B2 because B, this column B, and this is number two, where adequate is. So once you put that in once, all you have to do is grab that little square and bring it all the way down to the bottom and it will compute everything for you. So here, same thing, equals count if lower body, B2, and then I would drag the square. Equals count if flexibility, because remember I labeled that one flexibility, B2, bring it all the way down. You're gonna do that for each and every one, all the way down. Now I'm gonna show you what happens. So once you do that all the way through and we finish that up, you are gonna click on this box in the upper left-hand corner. That highlights everything. Once you do that, you do insert chart. And once you hit chart, this cool thing pops up. You need to maybe put in the title physical fitness, but now you can see visually where that student needs to improve. And instead of having five individual um, pie charts, you have this nice, neat bar graph that everyone can see. Okay, I see how she's doing. It seems like she's doing okay. You know, a lot of the stuff wasn't observed for physical fitness. She has adequate, but also needs improvement. So that kind of cancels out. So then we, we can look at gross motor. We've done the same thing. Wow, we're really seeing that her non-locomotor and her safety really need some improvement, as you can see here. Um, there's a lot of stuff that wasn't observed again. When we're going to behavior, wow, significantly inadequate. There's a lot of pieces here that need to improve and so on and so forth. So the, what I like to do with this information now is similar to what I do with the pie charts. I'm going to copy and paste this um, graph and I'm gonna put it right into that student's, um, I'm gonna put it right into that student's observation and referral form. So this is some of the information that I've taken, um, some of the notes that I've taken. And then what I've done here is I've written a little sentence about how we've collected it and I've just copied and pasted that form or that um, bar graph right in. And at the bottom is just a little summary about that physical fitness bar graph. And I've done that for each and every one. So there's the gross motor with a little summary behavior with a little summary and so on and so forth. And at the very bottom, we just kind of put our recommendation for that student. Conclusion, I have the PE teacher sign it or whoever collected that data. So this is my utilization. I mean, this is just kind of an overview. Typically, I'm gonna use a lot of these assessments to track the progress for individual students throughout the year, especially the, the, the using the Google Forms. Um, I'm gonna use it to input quarterly progress grades and notes. I'm gonna assess whether the current goals are appropriate. I'm gonna use that information as I just showed you within the Adaptive PE Annual Review Report. I'm gonna use it to create new goals for the following year, which we're already looking into projections, which is not so, but that's what we're doing um, here in November. We're um, using these when presenting the data to the team, the special ed department or parents, and we're also using it to dismiss or recommend a, a student for the Adaptive PE program. So there's lots of different ways to utilize that. I'm sure there's more that you can find um, within your programs, but these are the um, seven uh, main ways that I'm going to be using them for mine. When it comes to facilitators and, and their role, um, the team is huge. They're providing feedback about what's going on in their sessions, um, and that way I can I can look for that in my class and see whether or not that's that's happening in, in the Adaptive PE program. If it is, great. I'm going to capitalize that. I'm going to begin to improve on it. And if it's not, I'm going to figure out why and start using some of the same tools that those teachers are using so that my sessions are much more successful. Aids and paraprofessionals are 
awesome. They are with the kids all day. They know what's going on with them. They know whether or not they ate breakfast, whether or not uh, they're in a bad mood, whether or not they just came out of a behavior. They can also be great at taking that data collection for you. So if you have to be one-on-one -on -one with that student or hands-on with that kiddo, then they're the ones that are holding your cell phone or holding your computer and typing away and saying what they're seeing. Or you can verbally tell them and they can type it in or they can click through on that Google form really, really easily. Um, and then the nurse is super valuable. She's just going to let you know um, any changes to this kiddo's medication, any allergies, medical history, pieces like that, that are very important when you're taking data. Because if you find out that that kiddo didn't take its, his medication that day or her medication that day, that's probably really going to affect the data that you're taking. So it's very important just to keep those pieces in mind. When it comes to barriers um, and their role, sometimes the special ed department, I find they're very supportive, except in some cases they... Uh, have a hard time recognizing that as physical education teachers and adaptive PE teachers, we are looking at the whole child and the whole student. So we look at the cognitive, the affective, the, the physical, the emotional, all the things are happening in our class. At the same time, you know, I kind of, um, and it can be hard to, to uh, verbalize that to the special ed department. So that can be kind of difficult. So that's where this data really comes into play. Parents, a lot might, uh, a lot of parents might just have a lack of understanding about what the program is. So it's really important that you go to those meetings, that you show up, that you kind of speak to the parents about what it is that you do and why you do it. Some of them might just have denial about their students' needs or their child's needs. And that, that just comes with time. And that's, there's nothing you can really do to push parents one in one direction or another. That really comes when it comes. Um, and then time, space, and lack of personnel. I mean, that's huge. Um, if you don't have enough time or enough space or enough people to help you, it can be very uh, trying and very difficult um, to have accurate data, to be um, assessing every two weeks like you're supposed to be. So just doing the best you can, you can is really huge when it comes to this data collection piece. All right, that is it for me. Um, this is my... Um, QR code. So go ahead and take a picture of it. And that way you can get some more information about what it is, what I do, my YouTube channel. Um, I really enjoy sharing new ideas with people. And through my YouTube channel, I've actually been able to connect with people from all over the world, in fact. And so I'd love to connect with some people that are right here in New York. So please feel, feel, feel free to follow me or connect on my channel or on my website, and we can um, just keep learning from each other. Hope you enjoyed this. See you soon.